everybody, this is Mike Raftery from SCM Connections, and I'm here today for your five-minute feature, a short video series from SCM Connections where we highlight a different feature each time in IBP. And today we're going to look at demand sensing. So demand sensing is a uh, demand planning algorithm. It uses a combination of short-term forecast pattern recognition and machine learning to do two things. The first one is to make short-term forecast adjustments so your demand planners don't have to. This would be to take into account short-term trends. Uh, it could be point-of-sale data. It could be uh, orders coming in higher, lower than expected. It's going to modify your short-term demand signal so that your demand planners don't have to. The second thing it does is it takes your weekly bucket of demand and splits it up into daily buckets. That's a really handy feature to help with both deployment and to help with production. So it's not a guess as to where the demand materializes. If you have uh, products that have specific order patterns, for example, they sell 90% of their volume on the weekends, it's going to point your deployment, production, inventory values to carry more inventory in advance of the weekends instead of carrying it all week. So let's take a look into how it works. So the first thing we're going to look at here is the historical data. And the historical data I'm looking at here shows um, basic historical data for demand planning. So you're going to look at delivered quantity, confirmed quantity, requested quantity, basically are your orders in the past showing any sort of trend? In this case, I'm showing a lower trend. But this is what demand planning uses, uh, demand sensing uses, to predict and pick up those patterns. Now, what does that is in a forecast model. And this forecast model is here in your uh, internet browser. And what I'm looking at is saying my input for forecasting is my requested quantities. How much are my customers asking for? I'm going to create a sense demand forecast. This is going to be independent of my actual forecast. And how is it going to work? Well, it's going to look at your consensus forecast as a starting point. It's going to adjust that consensus forecast by either a maximum of 50 units, a minimum of 50 units, or a maximum of 35% or minimum of 30% within those ranges. Now I'm using some pretty small values, so I'm most likely going to get the quantities. When it does that, though, it's going to look to keep those forecasts in range. So you have your demand planners working on their consensus forecast. The uh, demand sensing algorithm can adjust that, but only within these parameters. I've also set up my demand sensing algorithm to pick up specific downstream signals. So I have sales manager forecast, I have local demand plans, maybe uh, store spreadsheets that I get, Nielsen data, maybe the sales team sending me data, but any of these uncorrelated data elements can be included in the demand sensing algorithm that will help it detect trends. So if your point of sale data is increasing dramatically, it will adjust your forecast dramatically in the short term and redeploy accordingly. So what does it look like in practice? So we take our historical data and we take our algorithms and it gives us this great view of your information. So I have a product up here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit until I pick it up. So my product here, 320, is going to look at a couple of things. First off is my demand planning quantity. In this case, it's a straight 75 unit forecast, and that's this yellow line. My demand sensing has looked at the trends in the demand signals. And what it's done is it said, actually, you know what? It's going to go up. And it's going to go up significantly in the short term. So if I didn't have demand sensing, I would be expecting 75 units, and I would miss those sales. And so the demand sensing algorithm is spitting out this number here. In this case, let's focus on week 10. It's spitting out. Uh, 289 units up from an original of 75. Well, that is outside of those boundaries we set, which is a capped number. And so it's going to give you, well, you know what? I know that 289 is the true number, but you've set those caps to keep me within range, so it's 125. That allows uh, to prevent some dramatic fluctuations in those demand quantities. Same thing on the downside. It's kind of forecasted much lower here, actually a zero. But because I have a floor, it says we can only go down 50 units, it says 25. I can also put in a manual override for 60, and my final demand sensing quantity is going to be 60 that I pass downstream. Now it takes that amount and actually breaks it out into daily buckets. So if you look at this value, this is an item in daily buckets that sells heavily on the weekend. So instead of a peanut butter spread or an even spread of demand sensing volumes, it's actually going to tell you, look, these are going to move a lot higher on the weekends, which will help you redeploy your inventory efficiently. A lot more shipments on Wednesday and Thursday, a lot less on Monday, Tuesday, to, in advance of those sales. It allows you to anticipate demand uh, in the short term and react to short-term demand sales patterns on a daily basis to feed your deployment and optimization engines. 
Hopefully you enjoyed it. That's a short version of demand sensing in your five-minute feature. I'm Mike Raftery from SCM Connections, and thanks for joining. Me.